Today we're gonna work on the lock plate. I figure before we get to the stock, we should probably make our lock plate and barrels so we can plan our dimensions accordingly. So this is just a railroad spike that I shouldered on the anvil with a, a rounding hammer, took the round face, and I just beat on a railroad spike until I had this flat plate here. Now, I uh, spared you the that, but what we're gonna do is use the same hammer and do a T-weld for the pan. We're gonna weld in a piece for the pan, which we'll then take and bend over the anvil. I think we'll fuller it first and then bend it over. Um, I think I'll also forge weld a bar across here to act as the standoff against the uh, barrel for all the internal components. So we'll be forge welding two pieces to this today. Okay, here I've clipped the head off a railroad spike, or not the head, the point off a railroad spike. I'm just giving myself a shoulder so I know where to cut it later. But I'm gonna round this end up a little bit. We're about 5 sixteenths of an inch, and I want about a quarter. But we're gonna set this up for the T-weld. Okay, there's about an even quarter inch in thickness. Here's my and we're going to work the tip of this out for the scarf of the T-weld. There we go. There is our pan blank formed. Next, we'll create the pocket for this on the lock plate. Okay, so here's our lock plate. And I think right about here looks good. Start pulling out this pouch. Yeah, this is working so good. See how we're getting that little pooch? We're not quite a knife edge on that pooch, so we'll give it one more heat. Clean up our notch a bit. We'll give it a brush. And some flux. Much more flux than needed. And we'll set this aside and return to, I'm gonna cut the head off the, uh, the pan shank so that way I can hold that another pair of tongs and we will weld these. There we go, there's that fluxed. Now we'll set up the uh, forge welding anvil, take it over to the fire and put these two pieces together. There's two pieces tacked together. Let's put them back in the fire. So you still need to clean up 
clean or weld in the toe on the back side. So I'll brush that off real quick and reflux it. And we will weld in from this side next. piece is welded in we'll finish flattening this out once we get this crossbar welded in but right now let's cut this off okay my camera overheated for a little bit but as you can see we have the pan welded to the lock plate and right on top there is a five piece of 5 16 square bar that we're gonna weld in as the standoff on there. Put some more flux on it. And back in the fire it goes. parts of our lock plate. Next we'll fuller some of the pan in and bend it over. slot chisel to fuller in a rough groove. Okay, now that we have that, this is going to be the back of the lock, so we're going to pull out some material using this fuller to pull out some material to bend up for the uh, flash guard. of you out there will notice I put that on the wrong side or I put my dimple on the wrong side you can see we have that pulled out so we can bend that up oh no 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 that's where my dimples on the right side and I can just flip this around and change where that's sitting Just like that. There we go. Now we'll fold this over. Guard. Tongs. Do the preliminary bend. Drop this down. Forge lock plate. Now, this was just an experiment. I welded this way too far forward. 
I forgot to blend that in and I put this bar the standoff bar on the wrong side you can see that split and the toe of the forge weld there there you go toe of the forge weld and the split I wanted this to come over the piece to avoid it splitting like that and I want that bar and that toe on the inside so I'm going to remake this but this is the exact process that I'm going to use to make the new lock plate.